Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio, hope everyone's well. Today we're going to prepare a background and then paint a, um, an orchid, a white orchid in a pot. And the background I'm going to prepare is going to be wet in wet and then I'm going to do a bocce effect on it to give a nice gentle soft background. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just spray water lightly over my sheet of paper here, which is a stretched sheet of um, Bockingford watercolour paper. And uh, if you don't know how to stretch paper, it's a skill well worth learning. And I do have a video which shows how to do that. If you just go to Diane Anton, go to YouTube and then search Diane Anton Studio and then... Um, all in one line on the search box, put Dianant on Studio Stretching Paper, and uh, you'll find the video there very easily. As indeed you'll find any video of mine if you just put Dianant on Studio in the, in the YouTube search and then the name that you think it would have, so like butterflies or whatever. So anyway, so that's now wet, and I'll just let that sink in a little bit, and uh, I'll show you the three colors I'm going to use, which are, um, this is a uh, potter's pink, and I'm just going to mix that up a little bit so that I've got a nice <clears throat> amount of paint there. And if you need to test the colour, it's I, I, I don't go in for the, well, it's thickness of light cream or it's the thickness of yoghurt or whatever, um, because paints vary in how intense they are. Um, regardless of the thickness of the mixture that you've made. So what you need to do is you need to find yourself a piece of scrap paper, a piece of watercolour paper that you have designated for the job of being scrap. And uh, so when you think you might be close to what you want, you just try it out. And uh, that's probably about right. Give it another quick swish. And I think that will probably be intense enough. Okay, that's for what I want. I think that will probably be fine. Then I've got two other colours I'm going to use, and one of them is... Um, I've got a bit mixed up with some yellow there. I'll just clean that out of this little dish. This is um, Naples yellow, which is an opaque yellow. Quite a strong colour, so we won't need to dilute that. Sorry, we will need to dilute that quite a bit. So put plenty of water in there. And uh, so that's that. And then the third one is this grey colour, which is Davy's grey. And um, it's got little lumps in it because I've cannibalised a pan. I've got a little, this is the only Davy's grey I've got. So I've dug a piece out using my paper knife, which is not sharp, so it didn't hurt me. So I've dug a bit of that out and put it in here and then added water and then I'm making myself a wash that I can use in the same way as if it was squeezed out of a tube. So that's that. So that's fine. So now we've got the Davies Grey, um, Naples Yellow and Potter's Pink, three soft colours. And uh, this is probably okay to paint into now. And so what I'm going to do is just at random, pretty much at random, I'm going to drop these colours in and um, let them do their own thing. So I don't want a dark um, background for this. I just want a mixture of soft Colours. Oh, I didn't mention the brush. 
This is a Ron Ranson Hake or Hake brush uh, from Pro Art. They're very inexpensive, and if you haven't yet bought yourself any kind of wash brush for doing this kind of thing, um, then this is a very good option. So I'm just dropping in a bit more um, colour. I don't really want a um, right to left, what do you call it, um, bias to this. So I'm going to come back in from the other direction and repeat basically what I did. So put yellow where I put yellow. I, if you put the same colour everywhere, then you're going to end up just with complete grey. So drop in some more Davies Grey. And uh, I'm running out of grey here. Use a bit more pink. Uh, so that's fine. That's going to dry as a nice light background and hopefully then it will work for the Bocky technique. So I'm going to put that aside. And I'm going to just demonstrate how I'm going to do the Bocky technique here. This is one I did before and I've already started it. And the way I do it, and there is more than one way, I use one of these um, stencils, which is meant for people doing um, geometry or technical drawing. And I use that with a sponge. I use a natural, a piece of natural sponge which is, you can buy these from, um, uh, Jackson's have them, for example. It's just a piece of natural sponge. It doesn't have to be natural sponge though, although it's quite nice to use natural sponge. Um, and then all I do is I look at my design of the thing I did before, which was similar to the one I've just done. And then I just come in with my stencil and rub. And if you use the right kind of paper, you won't have a problem with bubbling of the paper. It has to be a reasonably strong paper. Um, I like to use cellulose paper for this because it's a bit more robust than um, cotton. So you're just rubbing gently Try it with a piece of paper towel and just overlap your circles until you get the effect you want. Some of them you're going to do more lightly than others. And just lift up a little bit and others you might want to lift more. Okay, so now we're going to have a go at this orchid. And um, I'm going to do this in a very free style. I'm not going to in any way make this what you might call um, botanically correct or in any way uh, re photorealistic or anything like that. But uh, it's going to be just um, very loose. So I'm going to put in some uh, some buds up here. We'll start with some buds and come down here and uh, 
orchids have got a number of petals, so I'm going to use these lighter areas as a kind of guide for the light parts. I think it's kind of like that, and it has a sort of funny face in the middle there, like that. And this is going to be another one. And then perhaps we'll put another one up here. And uh, another one here. And I'm going to find a softer pencil. Just a minute. That's not really working for me. Okay, so that's better. Two stems and one, two, three, one, two, three, four. That one's kind of from the side. Two stems and then down here, a kind of pot. Okay, I might have to use some white gouache on these flowers. I might have to do that. In fact, I think I will, um, but I haven't put in the leaves yet. So the leaves, of course, are quite an important aspect. Think, how shall I start this off? I think I'm going to start off with some white. I'm getting quite low on white. I've got to order some more. And um, then I'm going to need a reasonably big brush, I think. I don't want to be too finickety about this. Uh, yeah, okay, let's try with this one. And I'm just going to put in the white petals over this background, roughly um, where I've drawn roughly the, the shape of the orchids. I'm just coming back up here, going over it again as it soaks in and dries. And the, the relative amount of soaking in will give me shadows on the flowers. So it kind of paints itself sort of thing. And we'll have to let that dry and then we'll probably need to add some more. 
and then I'm going to put some colour on the inside. And uh, we've got these green buds up here, so I'm going to continue to use a little bit of the white with some green. Mix that in with some yellow. And then I'm going to want to paint the stems in a light green as well. And the beauty of using this yellowy green on this background is that it contrasts nicely. It's the opposite to the um, purple that's behind. And I'm just going over the graphite pencil. I won't try to rub that out because firstly, I wouldn't be able to and secondly, why would I? Okay, so then we need the leaves in the background here. Try to mix the colours a little bit so that it's not all one shade of green. I'm using um, Naples yellow and sap green. A bit more um, white there. I'll be able to rub those lines out if they refuse to go away. And um, then Okay, so as you can see, that's still wet actually, but I will have to come back in with more white and thicker. In some places. You have no idea how this is going to turn out. It's the thing about these kinds of paintings. You just have to go with the flow.
need to put something darker in there. Um, It's a sort of grey, beige, we can always adjust that later. And if we feel, which we might, that some of the background is too dark, then we can always lift some of that out using the Bocce method, which I'd already used here to a certain extent. Um, yeah, but I'm going to have to let that dry for a minute and uh, come back to it and put some more white on once the white is dry. And then I'm going to put something in the middle here for the centre of each of these flowers. I'm not quite sure what colour I'm going to use yet, but probably, I don't know, we'll see, yellow probably. Okay, so I've intensified the um, white as much as I can at the moment with the paint that's uh, left to me. And now I'm going to, um, I'm just going to put in some, this is uh, again, Naples yellow and uh, the photo I'm working from has got the centers are kind of three three sort of main areas of yellow and then a couple below the like that and then um, it's also got some red bits so some pink so I'm just mixing a bit of uh, Naples with um, some uh, alizarin crimson and then I'm just going to put in a few little touches. I'm not going to overdo it. It's very tempting at that point at this point to go crazy and put in lots of color but I don't think I don't think I want to do that so I'm just going to just put in some few touches of pink there and then um, I think possibly I might want to just add a little bit more here to the earth in the pot. And um, I think we probably need to make the back of the pot yellow, same as the front. And then I think that's probably about it. So I hope you enjoyed that. You haven't missed anything at the bottom. It's not cut off or anything like that. Hope you enjoyed that. Give me a like and subscribe if you did. And um, the sketch for this will be on dianantone.com. So pop over there and it's totally free. So you can just download that whenever you want. So thanks very much for being with me and I'll see you again soon. Bye now.